Welcome to Circuit Praise. Thank you to those who were involved in creating our hymn tracks. And thank you to the Choir of St John's Whitley Bay for adding a few more to our hymn selection. Through Lent, the Methodist Church is using the theme Love Divine, based upon the hymn by Charles Wesley. And I've tried to build on that for today using Reflections and Prayers by Sally Foster Fulton and Jan Berry. Sally wrote resources for Lent and Easter focusing around Mary and her seemingly wasteful act of anointing Jesus. And this has reminded me of the time I had a miniature bottle of my favourite perfume in that I kept in my handbag for a just-in-case, except that one day I could smell something, only to find that the lid had come off and the perfume had been seeping out and the bottle was empty. For ages after that, each time I picked up the bag to put on my shoulder, I could smell what I felt that I'd lost. And yet, in some ways, it was still there. So, let us join together and sing.
she had used spikenard, a whole pound of it. It wouldn't have just filled the room or even the house. The scent would have clung to all of those present. It would have hung on their clothes. It would have settled in their hair. It would have permeated and overwhelmed their senses. That much pure essence oil would have been so powerful, you would have almost tasted it. And it wouldn't have dissipated quickly or easily. It would have remained. Mary's hair would have held that fragrance for a long time after he was gone. The memory would stay with her. More alive because of her sense of smell would have brought it flooding back. And so every time she moved or walked, tossed in her sleep or put her head in her hands, she would have been reminded of him, of what he had meant to her, done for her, what she had done for him. Some had told her that her extravagant act had been wasteful, but she didn't agree. I mean, really, how can you waste love? I wonder how long the scent would have stayed with him when they waved their palm branches in the air. Did the fragrance waft through the crowds? Did it stir some deep-seated emotion in them? Would they have understood its significance? Would he have felt a bit more determined because of this lingering anointment? Before the disruption started in earnest, when his soul was troubled, did it ease him? I'm certain that it hung in the air in the upper room as the feet were washed and the supper eaten. And when the trouble came so rapidly and his friends fell away and there was betrayal and denial, I wonder if he was comforted, upheld, affirmed by the fragrance that still surrounded embraced him. When he was marched and dragged all over Jerusalem, I wonder if the oil soothed his feet. When they drove the nails in, did the sedative effects calm him, the scent reassure him? And at what everyone else thought was the end, I wonder if he looked down and saw her face remembered her gesture when the breeze sent the aroma to him. She'd used spikenard, a whole pound of it. It wouldn't have just filled the room or even the house on the night he was anointed. The scent would have clung to all those present. It would have hung on their clothes. It would have settled in their hair. It would have permeated and overwhelmed their senses. That much pure essential oil would have been so powerful. You would have almost tasted it. And it wouldn't have dissipated quickly or easily, but would have remained. Some had told her that her extravagant act had been wasteful. But she didn't agree. Neither did he. I mean, really, how can you waste love? From him you came helpless babe, entered our world your glory. To be served but to serve And give your life that we might live This is our God, the servant king He calls us now to follow him To bring our lives as a day
how soon we forget. Why do some of the most beautiful, the most powerful and vital happenings slip from our memories like the mist? While we cling to hurts and imagined pains like grim death. God of life and love, thank you for the lavish gifts and the beauty you shower on us. For lovers and family and friends. For times and places never to be forgotten. For the raucous laughter of children. And the gentle whisper of a dear one. We remember and return again in thanks to you as we recollect the love and betrayal of your last days. Help us to take from that high secret shelf the sweet perfumes we have kept especially. We will offer them without hesitation to the ones you love. We will not count the cost. It is a gift to you. In a world of violence, let them soothe. We pray for folk in the news and in places only you know of. We pray for innocent and guilty alike. Soothe their wounds. Help us to do whatever we can. In places of pain and fear, wipe their tears away. Help us to do whatever we can. God who never counts what has been spent on us. Help us to be generous. Amen. Lord thy Christ to be disciples every day in every place. We are not to hide as hermits, but to spread the way of grace. Citizens of heaven's kingdom, for this world is where we live.
Sometimes hope shouts in triumph, declaring victory over injustice and overthrowing tyranny. Sometimes hope dances in our hearts, delighting us with its playful laughter, enchanting us with its joyful wisdom. Sometimes hope whispers quietly, a murmured word, a gentle hand that awakens us to new beginnings. Sometimes hope creeps in unexpectedly, surprising our tears with its gleam, scaring us with its new possibilities. Sometimes hope is silent and all we can do is wait. Mm -hmm.